Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a power window conversion kit on a vehicle with manual windows. This is going to be on my work truck, which is a 2016 Chevy Silverado. It is a work truck, so it has manual windows, um, which is getting kind of frustrating because sometimes I want to open the passenger window and I can't when I'm driving. So I uh, did some research and I found this uh, kit on Amazon. It's only about $50. I said if it works, great. If it doesn't, I'm not going to be that upset. I wanted to check it out for myself. So in the kit, it comes with some things to, uh, you know, make it a full, complete install. So basically, it comes with a set of directions, comes with some hardware, some brackets and things like that to mount. These are the, the new motors that will be used to actuate the manual crank. So this side here has like splines on it and there's a bunch of adapters in that white bag there with the white pieces and you find the adapter that works to fit your automotive uh, manufacturer. And this side is just the, the other motor and then the wires go through here. So one for each door. But all the wiring, a bunch of wires in here. Comes with some switches. So the driver's side will have two switches. The passenger side will have one switch. And it's all just sort of plug and play um, as you go. So like I said, $50. Not really going to be upset if it doesn't work. Could always put back the manual cranks. So I just wanted to give you a little forward before we start digging into this install. So, all right, so the first step of removing the door panel to get access to the window crank on the inside is uh, removing the actual window crank here. And it's held in with a, um, a spring C-clip on the back side of the window crank. Kind of hard to show you right now, but you have to push in the actual material of the door and then get behind it with like a flathead screwdriver and then pry the C-clip open so that you can pull the crank off and it's probably a little bit of trial and error until you find the exact right spot. This is the crank. This is just a little plastic washer that comes with it and this is the C-clip that actually holds it in place. So that's what you're trying to remove to get the crank off. The next step you have to actually remove the door panel and there's a few screws held on and then also um, just clips all around the outside edge of the door. There's also some little panels that need to be removed like behind the door uh, release handle and then the door grab handle down in here. You have to just pry up a little panel and there's a screw um, below it. Like I said, it's a seven millimeter and they come out relatively easy. And then like I was saying, inside the grab handle, there's a little panel in there. It needs to be pried open Then there's a screw behind it. Actually, there's two screws behind it, but this is the little panel that comes out. There's also one behind the door grab handle, the door release, and there's a screw behind there as well. Well, those screws are removed. The only thing holding the door panel in place is clips around the outside perimeter of the panel, and you need to use some plastic pry tools uh, like trim removal tools to pry that open. So I have a nice big flat sturdy plastic pry tool that I like to use for removing door panels and you just find a spot and start working your way around. Then once everything's loose you can lift the panel off. Keep in mind if your door has electronics like electric uh, locks You'll need to disengage that as well. So once you have the door panel off, you have to do a little creative uh, test fitting um, with the motor and sending unit or whatever um, and the actual door panel that goes over this you know, sheet metal because this part of the door motor is kind of bulky and there's not always going to be room on the back side of the you know, door panel to fit it. So I've been playing around for a little bit to find an exact right good spot and I found that right underneath where the grab handle mounts to there's two screw holes here there's a big void underneath the door panel that will fit this sending unit perfectly so 
I uh, just fitted up the brackets for this, mounted it up to the spot and test fitted the door and I found that this, this is a good spot for it to uh, fit. Now I just have the crank assembly just loosely attached to the splines of the crank on the actual door. It's just kind of a mock-up purpose right now but I do need to attach some brackets to this piece here and then secure this crank assembly to the, the sheet metal of the door itself. They do provide you some screws to mount these brackets to uh, to the back of these, so use those, but then I just use my own self-tapping um, sheet metal screws uh, for these parts here. Um, I may trim this bracket down just so it's uh, a little less uh, intrusive in there, but that's basically the first thing you need to do. You need to do a lot of test fitting, and this is what the back side of the door panel looks like. There's this white, I guess it's sound absorbing material that can be unhooked from the top and then peeled back and you can kind of see the voids and the spaces here that allow. So this is the back side of the grab handle which is where we're mounting that unit right here. And actually I did a little bit of modification to this door panel itself. I cut, there was some, some more of this like structure framework, it's pretty flimsy. I don't know what exact, exact purpose it's serving but it was in here. I just cut it out because I don't honestly think it was doing very much. So that's where that sending unit's going to sit, right in this void here, um, right below the grad handle. There's not really a good spot elsewhere. This is where the bottom right there is where the speaker sits. There's a little bit of a void here next to it, but it's a little too close. The speaker for comfort, I thought there may be some interference there, so I didn't really want to put those too close to each other. So that's when I saw this and I decided that's probably a good spot. This kit comes with a variety of adapters to fit the splines on the crank. There's probably 20 or 30 different adapter pieces that they give you for all different makes and manufacturers because this is a universal kit. Keep that in mind. So you just have to find the splines that work for you for your make and model. For the Chevy, it's this one with the bigger one that slides over it. So this is actually two, two adapters put together. There's this little piece adapter that slides onto the splines there. And then there's also this piece adapter which slides, slides over that. And then the window crank assembly can attach. Once it's all hooked up, it'll be secure and it won't move. But that's, that's pretty much what you're looking at for the, the window crank assembly. This needs to have brackets put on it because this is going to have a lot of torque on it. You need the, this needs to be secure because when this sending unit sends signal, this thing's going to crank and it's going to want to rotate and it needs to be secure so that it, it rotates the spline and activates the window. All right, so fast forward a little bit. I've attached one of the window crank assemblies. I've also attached the sending unit assembly um, to the door panel, bolted up. Nothing's hooked up yet. My wires are yet to be hooked up, but I wanted to show you how I did this and some key things you need to keep in mind when installing this on your truck. Now, um, I found that there's a longer adapter spline in the package that works a lot better because the splines on the Chevys are way out towards the end of the spline so the mini adapter that's way in is right here is way out on the end of the splines but the ascending unit when attached is way back against the door so there's this longer adapter piece that I found is much better because there's more splines in contact here where this is going to be spinning. Now they give you 10 of these brackets and the pictures show to use three on the on the spinning on the motor unit and then two on the on the sending unit, which is what I did. I just used my own self-tapping sheet metal screws. I found it was a little bit easier with the drill. I found this works. I put the door panel on and off a couple times and everything seems to fit. I can close up the door panel without any issues. So now a couple other important things. So this adapter piece gets attached into the sending unit with a um, a C clip. It's really hard to see, but it, it, it looks like a key ring. Um, you can basically see just the little metal in there, right, right between the plastic and the silver on the outside. It's, it seats in there so that this adapter piece locks in to the motor. That way this thing's not sliding in and out, which you wouldn't want when it's going up and down. Another key piece is on the very tip of the adapter, there is a little screw there. That little screw basically connects the mini adapter, which is against the, the OEM splines, and then the bigger adapter. It, it screws right in. It's a long, thin, real tiny screw that has a, a very specific spot to go into um, on these two 
um, adapters. Each adapter has like a blank spot where there's no teeth and at that spot is where you need to insert the screw. So you need to make sure you line up the mini adapter on the splines here with the external adapter so that the teeth, the two spots with no teeth line up and that it creates a, a void perfect for that little screw to fit into. Two important things to keep in mind. Now these seem like they are very solidly attached. This doesn't have a lot of play. That's just the door wiggling as I'm as I'm yanking on that. Um, the next step really is to do some of the wiring. Now with the Chevys there is a boot um, on the side of the door panel that I'm gonna have to send some wiring back into the cab. Um, and then there's also some wiring you have to do on the door panel itself for the new window switch, which is what this gets hooked up to. Um, next up is hooking up your window switch and placing it on your door panel. This is all personal preference, but something to keep in mind is you need to make sure that the wires on this switch can reach the motor and the sending unit uh, mounted to the inside of the door. For me, the ideal location for this uh, window switch is like right here, which is which is right above the spot where the old crank was. Um, I've sat in the truck and I've found that this seems to be a, a pretty decent location um, as far as accessibility. That's about where they would be on a truck with with uh, power motor windows from the factory. Now, remember, you got to look at the back side of the panel, see if there's anything in the way. Seems like it's a pretty flat area back here, so I'll be able to mount that up um, pretty easily. Um, they do give you a template to install this so that you know where you're putting your screws because it looks like you're going to have to screw in through the back to attach this. So make sure you use the template and um, you also obviously have to cut a hole to allow the wires to pass through. So they give you this adapter which shows you which side goes up. It also has the locations for the um, screw holes which I'm going to pre-drill so that they all line up perfectly. I'm just going to attach it with a little bit of uh, you know painter's tape against the door cut out the center section and then pre-drill my holes and then mount up the bracket. I'm actually going to pre-drill the holes first. So go right over that, just like so. What I'm doing now is sending the screws through the back of the panel so that they can accept the housing on the front. Make sure you don't pre-drill your holes too big. You still want this, these screws to bite the plastic a little bit to make sure they're nice and snug. So I just used a, uh, I think it was a 3 32nd uh, drill bit and I pre-drilled these holes. And I'm not going crazy on torquing these down. Once they're snug and the housing is flush on the back, I'm stopping because it's plastic and I don't want to break anything. And I'm not using a screw gun because that's very easy to over torque with the screw gun. So just go by hand. This is what it'll look like on the inside of the truck. Once that's in, you can send your wiring through and line up your switch, pop it into place. Nice tactile feedback on those switches too, which is nice. All right, so fast forward a little bit. I've gotten one of the wires pulled through for the passenger side. Well, the, the wire pulled through the, the door grommet for the passenger side. And let me tell you guys, it was a pain in the ass. The grommet is hard to pass the wires through. You, I actually had to feed them from the cab then into the door, reverse style. But getting it through the grommet on the door right here, where the, where the door passes the... OEM wiring through was the hardest. I actually used a coat hanger and fished it into the cab and then taped it, taped the wiring into the cab and then pulled it through. And in order to do that, I had to remove the glove box bottom and top assembly to find where that coat hanger came through. So it's really a little more involved than I anticipated to get these wires through the door. I even had to remove the speaker to give myself some working room to grab the wires coming into that grommet through the door. Um, but once I did get everything pulled through, there's another grommet right here where I just popped them out um, and that's where I'll hook up to the door switch. It runs back to the driver's side door. Through the cab I'll have to fish it through um, underneath the dash and whatnot. 
and then do the same thing on the driver's side door, get it through the grommet and pop it out through this grommet here, and then eventually hook it up to power so that uh, the, the switches aren't active when the vehicle is off. And then I'm gonna show you how to run the wiring, this whole mess of wires through the cab, under the dash, and out to where you're gonna eventually have to run them through the driver's side door. So once you have that one side done, you have to pass those wires through to the driver's side, and it's pretty easy to route it through the dash. Obviously, before you install the glove box, it makes it a little easier. And um, I was able to route them over right over here underneath the steering wheel where I'm gonna leave them for now while I take off this driver's side door panel. But then you can route them underneath underneath the driver's side steering wheel um, as best you can to get to that grommet, which you're gonna have to do the same with the door grommet, which is right there and pass them into. Removal of this uh, driver's side door panel is gonna be the exact same as the passenger side. I'm gonna pop this door panel off now and uh, get to work on this side's motor and then the wiring associated with this side as well. So once you have the wire harness pulled to the driver's side, the driver's side door panel comes off just like the passenger side. There are two bolts on the bottom side. There's a bolt behind the latch there and then there are two bolts um, here at the grab handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Don't forget you got to remove your crank as well. So remember, we're going for putting this the motor here over the crank and the sending unit underneath this grab handle uh, mount. So if you just sort of line things up like so, you can get an idea of where things are going to be. Now, remember we also need to use our adapter um, to make this work. So you put the adapter into the motor and it should click into place. There you go. It, it slides right in. And then there's also the, the seating ring which also goes around the inner part of the adapter so that it stays in place. Just like so. You can kind of see it's in there now. You may need to use a little flathead screwdriver to seat it fully, but that keeps the adapter fully seated in this motor so that it doesn't come out. And if you remember, you need to line up the grooves on the two adapters so that you can insert that screw later on. So make sure you line those up perfectly so that there's a little space. And I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up or not, but there's a little groove space there. You can see it. There's a little space right there. That's where that screw is going to go to it locks these two adapters together. Make sure you line up those grooves perfectly. <clears throat> so I'm gonna attach motor first. Got the motor in place and before the, on the other side I bent these so that um, the bracket kind of conforms to the shape of the door. I'm gonna have to do that again on this side as well. So I've got the motor mounted to the crank. Now I'm also going to now install the little screw that holds the two adapters together. It's a very small screw. I mean it's you know a half an inch long, three eighths inch long, and a real tiny Phillips head. That's going to go right where those two grooves line up right here. Um, and it's very important those grooves line up otherwise you could end up breaking this when you go to insert that. So I've got a very small screwdriver and that's what you're left with. And like I said, that just locks those two adapters together so that they're not sliding on and off um, of the, the crank. And then the next step is attaching the sending unit, which like we're going to put right underneath this crank. Now we've got that trimmed down and it fits in there nice. We can go ahead and mount it with our screws. And again, I'm just using a uh, three quarter inch long number eight self-tapping screws. I think, you know, two screws per side is more than So, now that we have that, we can start with some wiring. We need to remove the speaker. Removing the speaker helps give us access to the grommet in the door so that we can pull the wires through. So, it's the same size uh, screw bit as the door panels. It's a seven millimeter. So, there's only one holding it in. There it goes. And then it, um, it kind of just cantilevers itself in. Don't forget to undo the wiring and set it aside. 
So this next part is what I would say is the hardest part of this install is getting the wires through the door grommet, especially if your truck has the Molex connectors at the door grommet. Otherwise, it's just an easy pass through. But if not, it makes it a little more complicated. To get the, the Molex connector out of place, there's a lever on it and it's usually held. So it's, if it's in the door, this lever is in the upright position. To get it out, you push it, this lever down and it pushes it out of the socket that it is, which is way back there in between um, the, the hinges. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time and I'm gonna pass the wires through a small hole at the top of the grommet. And it just gives enough room to pass the wires just underneath the clip here. And it'll, they'll basically pass over the top of the Molex and pass underneath the clip, which is on this rubber part. And then they'll just be able to dive right down into the, the rubber grommet and then I can pull them through to the door. I didn't realize I could remove this Molex connector on the other side, so this is gonna be a little bit easier, I think, because I was fighting all this back in the crevice of the door jam before. Now I can pull my wires to here, pull them out all the way, then shove them down and then fight this back into place afterwards. We'll see. And in order to give yourself some more workspace, I'm gonna remove this uh, trim panel underneath the dash of the driver side um, because I'm gonna have to use a coat hanger to insert into the space in the door and have it come out this side so I can attach it to my wires and then pull backwards into the door jam. The trim panel is held in with T25 torque screws along the bottom. I think there's two of them and then just clips um, around the uh, seam of the trim panel. So now that I got my wires pulled through the grommet there, it was a lot easier to remove the Molex connector on this side, pass the wires through into the door jam, and then once again through the grommet, um, instead of fighting the grommet with the Molex connector still attached. So I guess, you know, there's, there's two ways you can do it. And then I just poked a little hole in that grommet on the door and pass my wires through. That's where they will sit until I uh, connect all the harnesses for the switches and the, the switch motor and uh, the sending unit and whatnot. So the next step of business is to modify the back of the door card just a little bit to cut out some plastic to give space for our sending unit here underneath the door handle. Uh, so that is what I'm gonna do now. So when you have the back of the door card um, opened up with the sound absorbing material pulled back underneath the door handle which is right here for reference there's like a little cage of plastic stuff that goes underneath the armrest um, on the other side I showed you I cut some of that out basically all this plastic here doing structurally for the door but it's pretty flimsy plastic and I need room for the motor uh, sending unit so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it Two small snips and then you can just basically break that piece off it's you know, like I said it's flimsy plastic and we got this nice little cavity here for the sending unit on the back side of the door so once you drill your holes and cut out the opening for the wires you can install the screws and then screw on the cover on the other side so right now you're looking at the back side of the door panel and on this side obviously you get two holes openings uh, one for the passenger side door and one for the driver side door and you have enough room to pass your wires down through and uh, go from there so now that you have the door panel put together with the switches you can hook up all your wiring and connectors and then reattach the door panel <clears throat> remember for the harness you have to attach the connector and you need to line up the wires to the harness that's coming from the switch so make sure you line up the wires according to the color coming from the switch um, that's very important and also you need to hook up the sending unit to the correct connector as well. I'm going to go ahead and throw the door panel back on. So the final part of this installation is hooking up the power for the windows. Now I've mentioned before you want to hook up to a fuse that is keyed, meaning the power is only active to the fuse when the key is in the ignition and turned to the on. Otherwise the windows will always be activated and you can roll them down uh, when the car is off, which is not exactly safe, plus it might drain your battery. I found that my vehicle has a heated steering wheel fuse active. Even though this is a work truck, it doesn't have a heated steering wheel, so I figured good as good a fuse as any 
to use um, as a jumper. And I'm just going to be using one of these jumper fuses to get back off of the fuse, which is basically right where this is uh, landing here. It's right between all these two. That blank spot in between those two fuses is where this is going to go. Um, and if you don't know how to use these fuses, there's a great video. I'll link it in the description of how these things work. This is just a jumper fuse um, allowing you to piggyback power off of uh, an already existing fuse. So they're pretty handy. I've used them in the past. In this case, this, this module is going to insert right into the existing fuse just like that and the load, is, the load side is coming off to the left. Then it has this little pigtail which will connect crimped on to the wire harness from the door switch. Um, which is which is right here, which I will crimp into that connector there and then cover it with some electric tape Also, there is a black wire Which you should also route with your power wire, which I'm just routing it underneath the dash Where there's an inline fuse on the harness itself. And, uh, I run them both to the same location Then I'm it has a little um, eyelet on it that I Attached to a bolt which is back here um, in this fuse panel so the, the ground for this wire harness you need to make sure that's nice and sturdy and a good spot is right here off this bolt So that's that's ground and then this will get connected To the, the fuse tap harness like so and I'll crimp that connector on and then everything should work So I have everything connected and I'm going to turn the key on and see if the switches work once these are powered up, they do light up. There's a green LED on them. I'll give a close up in a second. Um, but here's the moment of truth. Power windows. Pretty cool. They're kind of loud, but you know what? It's a retrofit. I'm not expecting it to be perfect. So the driver's side works great. Let's check the passenger side. Awesome. Goes a little slower probably because the wire is a little further away from the power source. But it is working. And it does fully close. This is the test on the passenger side. Looks like it works pretty good. I'll probably add some silicone to the grommet inside the window to let it slide a little easier because um, these probably have been dusty and never been lubed up so that might help it move up and down a little more freely. And then you can see that is lit up uh, green when it is turned on. Hopefully you can tell. There you go. That's kind of cool. A couple more things before this video ends. I know it's a long one guys. They include this crank in their kit um, just in case for whatever reason you need to crank the windows up all the way for if it's not working and that allows you to just insert it through here. You might need to trim out a little bit of this, this door because it doesn't line up perfectly but it's got the splines and you'll just insert this in and then you can manually crank the window up or down if, in the event that these do fail. So another thing is to make that look a little bit better they do include a bunch of different size caps to just fill in the hole. I haven't found the one that fits perfectly yet, but I'm assuming one of these will work. Otherwise, I may just live with it since, like I said, it is a work truck. I know it was a long one. There's definitely a lot involved. I'd say this is a pretty difficult to severe installation. If you're not familiar with how to remove door panels and how electric systems work and how to run electrical through door panels and whatnot, I'd say, you know, stay away from this and have a professional do it. Otherwise, just live with the crank windows. Like I said, it was $50 on Amazon. Hopefully, the components last a while. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more. Later.